Real Madrid were the world's first super club. As football boomed, they expanded the game's horizons, winning the newly launched European Cup five times in a row from 1956 and again in 1966. After decades of underachievement, the club relived those glory years as the 20th century gave way to the 21st, with some of the game's best players attracted to the Spanish capital. became entwined with show business. Madristas in the mid-90s, the memories of Di Stefano and Hento lifting the European Cup were fading, and nostalgia was meager nourishment. For nearly 30 years, some exceptional players and managers had failed to deliver European football's greatest prize. But in 1995, Lorenzo Sanz took over the club presidency, and he appointed a new manager, Fabio Capello. A man whose AC Milan side had humiliated Johan Cruyff's Barcelona dream team in 1994. I decided on a change, and so I went to Real Madrid, where I found a team that needed to be rebuilt, as they'd gone three years without winning anything. Capello identified Madrid's shortcomings and went shopping. Mijatovic, Sukar, Seedorf, and Ilgner were all brought in, along with a player who would enhance Madrid's reputation for exciting football, left-back Roberto Carlos. Capello blended these signings with homegrown talents such as Fernando Hierro and Manuel Sanchez. I put together a great team, and we won the title ahead of a very good Barcelona side, with Ronaldo, Figo, Guardiola, Stoichkov. A great, great team. Una grande, grande squadra. That Madrid side went on to win a great deal over the next few years, and most of that team were players chosen by me. Capello. Capello. He was able to adapt immediately to the Spanish spirit. I think that his time in Madrid changed him more than any other experience. But then I made my biggest ever mistake in football. After a phone call from Silvio Berlusconi, I agreed to return to Milan as coach. I think the best thing I took from my adventure with Real Madrid, and it's something I still hold with me today, is that when I arrived at the club, everyone who worked there was convinced that it was the greatest club in the world. Capello was replaced by German Jupp Heinkes, whose only major addition to the title-winning squad was striker Fernando Morientes. He's a very special coach for me. When I arrived, he had just arrived as well, and he was very serious, very responsible, very methodical and hardworking. I had a great relationship with him. But the Germans struggled to control the strong personalities within the dressing room. What had worked at other clubs didn't work at the Bernabeu. The Jupp I knew in Bilbao was different from the Jupp in Madrid because the dressing room was different, the club was different, the expectations were totally different. In the same way that I was different from the way I was in Bilbao, Jupp changed from how he was in Bilbao. Madrid's league form was indifferent, but in Europe they shone. In 1998, they were drawn against defending champions Borussia Dortmund in the semi-final of the Champions League. It had been many years since Real Madrid had been in the Champions League final, 
And we got that opportunity to get there against Borussia Dortmund, a very good Dortmund side. I was lucky enough to score the first goal. I remember a cross coming in from Roberto Carlos from the left wing, and I was at the back post and knocked it in. The self-proclaimed greatest club in the world had been trading on past glories for far too long. May 20, 1998 was a chance to put that right. And we were against one of the best teams around at that time, a Juventus team with great players like Zidane, Del Piero and Inzaghi. So we went to the final in Amsterdam hopeful knowing we had a tough task ahead of us, but with a lot of confidence, believing in what we could do, make history. I remember in that match, Juventus came out very strongly, and at the start I thought it was going to be really difficult to win. But then the team settled down, and we began to close down Zidane, who was the best player in their team. a matter of waiting for the final whistle to get our hands on the trophy. When the final whistle blew, the 32-year-old wait for La Septima was over. Real had their seventh European Cup and the rejoicing in Amsterdam was matched in Madrid. I have to tell you this. I've been very lucky to have won a lot of things with Real Madrid and with other clubs. But I've never had those feelings that I had when I won that first Champions League with Real Madrid. Everyone criticised Madrid for only having won European Cups in black and white. And there had been so many generations of fans and players, great generations, who had not seen Real win the European Cup. So on account of all of this, in Madrid, it was a real party. For Heinkes, the celebrations were brief. Shortly after delivering European glory, the German was sacked. I think the players were very conscious that the time had come for a change of manager, because the team had not done well enough in the league for a club the size of Real Madrid. Two more managers came and failed. Goose Hiddink and John Toshak each lasted only a matter of months though Toshak did guide the club to Champions League qualification by finishing second in the league in 1999. New players such as Steve McManaman, Michel Salgado, Ivan Ilguera and Nicolas Anelka replaced stars of the seventh European Cup win. ...season badly and when Toshak was sacked, the team sat eighth in the league. Madrid is Madrid. It's, it's always mad. They're the most successful team, you know, in, in the world. So um, there'll always be huge amounts of pressure on the manager. Firstly, to play entertaining football. They have to please the crowd. And secondly, to be successful. It was a difficult time. Very difficult. our fans and around the whole club. Real Madrid has to win, it always has to win. And after two or three defeats, everyone talks about a crisis. Vicente Del Bosque was promoted from within. He was already a club legend, having played more than 300 games for Real. Well, it's fair to say it wasn't an ideal situation. I believe very much in good relations. But this was a turbulent time, a difficult time, and results add to the bad feeling. In November 99, when we took over from Toshak, things weren't that great at all, in terms of uh, the directors and the management. Replacing Toshak in November 1999, he oversaw Madrid's worst home defeat in 25 years, a 5-1 drubbing by Zaragoza. It just wasn't logical that they should score five goals against us at home. Our morale was at an all-time low then. 
We'd come from two years of managerial changes and things not being right at the club. Vicente, he would turn things to normal. We didn't improve immediately. We didn't do well in the league, but we prepared well for the Champions League and we did well in that competition. The quarter-final once again saw Real meet the holders, this time Manchester United. It was a Manchester United team from their greatest era, with Giggs, Cole, Beckham. A great team, an extraordinary team. We played a great game here and drew nil-nil, but then over there we were able to win 3-2. It was a fantastic match. Raul and Redondo led the way as Madrid silenced Old Trafford. When you play Manchester... to set up a final against Valencia. Paris became Spanish for the day. Valencia were pretty much the favorites as they had eliminated Barcelona in the semi-finals and were almost clear favorites in the final. But we didn't give them a chance to play. And on the day, we were better. We really thought that Valencia would be stronger than they were. In all honesty, it turned out to be a lot easier than everyone thought. When you score the first goal in a final, this releases a bit of the tension and you become more confident in what you're doing. From the start, it all went to plan for us. We won 3-0 and we all enjoyed the game. We didn't want it to end because we were playing really well. And we were so superior to Valencia. It just turned into a big celebration. We went 3-0 up after 75 minutes or, or whatever. And you know, we'd effectively won the trophy after after 70 minutes, and you know we were showboating and flicking the ball and messing around with it and laughing and joking, and to to be that comfortable in the European final, and it was um, it was a wonderful feeling. Just a few months after the humbling by Zaragoza, Del Bosque had delivered his first trophy. A seemingly doomed season had ended with the eighth European Cup, and the manager, having proved himself, was in a strong position but change was looming at the Bernabeu. Florentino Perez, a Madrid property developer, had campaigned to become... ...successful, he promised to sign Luis Figo from bitter rivals Barcelona. Perez was elected, and for a world record fee, Figo duly arrived. The money came from selling the old training ground, prime city centre real estate, to the city council. Another transfer brought in Frenchman Claude Macalelli to add steel to the midfield. Oh, Claude was fundamental. He gave us so much balance. He really was the point of balance in that team, because it was so offensive. It was amazing arriving at Real Madrid to play there with all these things that are associated with his club. De Stefano was at my presentation. He's a legend, and that was exceptional. But I couldn't imagine at the start how it would turn out. It was just amazing. Real Madrid won the league in 2001, finishing all of 17 points ahead of Barca. Two seasons, two major trophies for Del Bosque, a man supposedly brought in to steady a wallowing ship. I think he showed how to handle a group of big-name players. We had some Ballon d'Or winners, big characters. 
He imposed his way of doing things on us, even though he didn't talk that much. He's a very sensible man who has the capacity to control a dressing room with some very big personalities, and that's the key to his success. He makes the players who are playing week in, week out very happy, but he also makes those who aren't playing feel the same, and that's a great quality for a manager to have. He's a great manager with so much charisma. And he understands players because he'd played as well. And under his management, this team improved. Del Bosque's leading striker was another Spaniard, Raul, who had blossomed into one of football's most productive goal scorers. Madridismo. He is the personification of Madrid's spirit. And there was a further boost when Perez gave the club and its fans a very special centenary present. The record transfer fee was once again broken as Real Madrid's latest signing was unveiled, Zinedine Zidane. It's difficult for anyone who joins Madrid. Zidane had the same thing. He was under a lot of pressure. He had to ask himself questions. He had to replicate the way he'd played at Juventus, but this time at Madrid. Whatever you'd achieved in the past doesn't count. You had to do it again at Real Madrid. The president's dream of allying Galacticos to homegrown talent was taking shape, though not everything ran smoothly. Zidane struggled with injuries and with his form, and an inconsistent team could finish only third in the league. But again, the club excelled in Europe. In the quarter-finals against Bayern, Real were behind 2-1 after the first leg, but rallied at the Bernabeu. Goals from Elguera and Guti were decisive. The semi Well, every Champions League match is special because you're trying to become the best team in Europe. But to be thrown into this battle, to have the chance of getting to a final against such a huge club in our country, and then add to that the rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid in the context of a Champions League semi-final, well, you need a lot of guts to handle the pressure in a match like that. We won 2-0 and that gave us that little bit of breathing space in the, in the Champions League, you know, because um, we, we had them in the semi-final of the Champions League, so to take them back to our place with a 2-0 lead was, um, you know, the tie was, the tie was effectively won then. At the new Camp, Zidane showed his class and repaid at least some of his fee in opening the scoring. Steve McManaman added a second. It was the first time he'd won there in a long, long time. And I didn't realise, as much as I was very happy that we won the first leg 2-0, in the dressing room afterwards, the Spanish players, the Spanish Madrid players in particular, were going crazy, you know, with, with happiness. That happiness was compounded in the second leg as the Bernabeu toasted Raul's strike. Another final awaited. Hamden Park, Glasgow, a fitting venue, the scene of reality. in 1960, a display that stunned the world and set the benchmark for all other football clubs. In club terms, it is the highest level, and we enjoyed it a lot. Real Madrid have won it nine times, and I believe it's the club's favourite competition. It's true to say that we concentrated on that competition and that it is the hardest to win in terms of the level of football. And we were there to win it. And it's true that it was a great game up in Glasgow.
It had been a really difficult final to get to. And of course, we were desperate to win it. But Leverkusen made us sweat. It was a really hard game. And they had lots of chances. We went ahead, they equalized, and then came that goal from Zizou. And then Zidane. Let me tell you, the day before, he had practiced this kind of move in training, with his left foot and his right foot, and then it happened in the European Cup final, and it seemed as though everything was destined to happen that way, that we would be in the final, Zidane would score, and we would win. It was a privilege to be part of this team in that stadium, to be involved with a goal that I think is the best ever in Champions League finals. And the fact that it goes on to give you victory, well, it's the goal of the Champions League. It was just magnificent. And to be there as his teammate when he scored that goal, it was special. I think that any football lover, not just Madrid fans, enjoyed that goal. But the whole team performed well. Substitute goalkeeper Ricard Casillas kept Leverkusen at bay with a string of fine saves and Madrid's Galacticos had won the club a ninth European Cup. It was great. There are no words to describe it. The whole city gets behind you. I've won trophies with teams like Chelsea and in France. But with Real Madrid, it's something else. It really is the club in world football. The next season, the Brazilian Ronaldo was signed following his brilliant goal-scoring performances at the 2002 World Cup. He added a further attacking option in a team already brimming with talent. Del Bosque presided over another league title, but then style began to be valued over substance. This team was really well set up, both from a footballing point of view and on the human side as well. We all respected each other. Del Bosque was our manager, Hierro our captain. In my humble opinion, we would have carried on winning things, titles. First and foremost, they, they, you know, they sacked uh, Vincente Del Bosque, they sacked the manager and then um, decided to get rid of Fernando Hierro, the captain, that was a huge blow. The club hierarchy, they wanted to portray a different image of the club and move it into another direction, more media friendly, more about image. But that, of course, it has to be done with players who can win, that portray the right image of the club. And they forgot about that. We have to understand that someone has to take responsibility. And also, as a manager friend of mine said to me, from time to time, you have to freshen things up so that the project doesn't get stale. I left, Hierro stopped being captain, Del Bosque left. That was a big shock for the group, emotional even. And that was reflected in the results. And that's why they didn't win anything for four years. Because key players who were important had left, both on the field and in the dressing room. We'd won the European Cup without the so-called Galacticos, if you know what I mean. 
But also, you know, we had a, we had Galacticos in the team, we had the Roberto, the Roberto Carlos in the team and Raul in the team. So, you know, for the first couple of years, The record books state that Real Madrid won three European Cups and three league titles in seven years, returning the club to the forefront of world football. David Beckham became the latest Galactico, but to many it seemed that commercial aspirations had overtaken football ambitions. There were departures of important players. The squad was left unbalanced, and when Del Bosque had gone, Real Madrid struggled. Whether or not the Galacticus experiment worked remains the subject of much debate, but there is general agreement that it was an era in which one of football's greatest clubs assembled one of football's most impressive teams.